Not bad. Two hours ago. You're going you're gonna to see most of them now. <laughs> right, people, 7 o'clock, we're going to kick off. Evening all. Evening, mate. Good morning, good morning. If I can ask you all to mute yourselves, please, so we don't get no interference. Right, we've got, um, so far, we've had 22 Zooms. I didn't realise it had been that many. We're uh, going well. I enjoy doing them, as long as people enjoy watching them, especially with the speakers, what we're getting, then uh, I'm going to keep going. Tonight's a big one, meaning we've got 243 slides to get through. Uh, five speakers, first one up, Nigel, as you can see. He's even on before the Queen. I don't know where he does it. Second speaker is Nigel Coe. Then we've got Geoffrey Stafford Winston in for a while from Belgium. You can give us an update. Lynn Griffiths and then Rowley on the arse end. And I'll tell you at the end what's happening for the next couple of weeks. So we will kick off. Nigel, you all ready, mate? Yeah, um, this is just a quick one, really. We're away from the allotment for a change. So, yeah, a quick story. Some friends of ours, it's their Ruby wedding anniversary. So, as a gift, we decided to buy them a, a rose called Ruby Wedding. So, David Austin Roses, the world famous breeder, is only 10, 15 minutes away from me. So, I took a trip down. Unfortunately, most of the roses had gone past the best now because uh, it's on the back end of the season. Normally, you can just pop round, but since COVID, there's been a booking system where you have to book online and book a slot, and then you can get in. But, but the gardens are set out beautiful, and most of the roses are on display with very well labelled. There is one or two which you can't get, but you can actually pre-order them there. But all the greenhouses, it's, it, and all I've done is just took photos just to give anybody an idea what it's like who has never been there. So, far away, make the look after the self with the pictures. Good man. And uh, all the roses scented? No, no. No. But the, um, as, as you go into that shop there, which we looked at just, go back one. There. Yeah. There's a big coloured catalogue you can pick up free. And it, it, it um, Describes all the roses, whether them bush, standard, tea, hybrid, um, scented, highly scented, best way to gram. It's really good catalogue and it, it don't cost you nothing. It's free in there. So, mm. and you're just free to wander around. So, away you go. So, going into the shop, there, there's the first hand, even the best, probably arguably the best rose grower in the world is now using mycorrhizal fungi for his roses. So, he, he that's more than proof that it's working as well. So if, the, if he uses it, it's got to be working. Oh, that's by the way. I think that's about three pound ninety nine for that bag. Yeah, ninety gram. Yeah. Been... yeah. So just go along, Mick. Now that the the it's not only roses is there. He's got roses, but he's got uh, herbaceous plants mixed in with them. And you see, you got there, you got some box pyramids, really set out nice. The garden is lovely. It's right next door to Cosford Airfield, which, when the the air shows on, which like the red arrows are used there every year, it puts a restriction on. It charges you £20 to go on the car park, I think it is. And then if you buy anything, you get your money back. Because people was going there, just staying on the car park, watching the air show for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like you. That does. <laughs> yeah. Right. Next one, Mick. As you guys see, it's it's just fantastic the way that the gardens are laid out. You just wander around what you like, and the roses are dotted, but the all of them are very well labelled. Next. As a little chap, I was in on my way round, and uh, he's obviously enjoying his dinner. So I got quite close to him, took that on my phone, and uh, he just stayed there. Next. It's a nice yellow. It is all. Nice and bright. And we've got the um, 
Well, she said I like the box pillars. I do them look beautiful. They are. Is this a proper wall garden? Yes. Closed. Yeah, yeah. He's got about there's about sixty themed gardens around there, and the roses and put in there to suit the aspect of whatever it, it is the garden like. You know, it's really good oh, always yeah. laid it out. And uh, so mo most people who go there expect just to see roses. It isn't. I mean, there's there's the usual garden centre stuff. There's a tea room there, and they've got like a peacock walking around, and that it's it's a lovely place to go for a for a day out. Well, half a day out, like you know. Yeah. Uh, so most of the photos you've seen, fell for you. I see no roses, but <laughs> there is roses there, honest. That, that's like a a rill or a a big nice pool, and it's a lovely place to just go and sit on them benches and. It's bang in the middle of the countryside, so all you can hear is like the birds singing. Have a good day for it. Yeah, that was that was uh, last Monday. I went there. So it's very well kept. The house, if you look right down the back the top of the edge, the house there, that was the house that David Austin lived in. I think he passed away last year or the year before, but his, his son, David Austin Jr., runs it now. Oh. He has got he has got a daughter who has nothing to do with houses, but she's got her own nursery called Claire Austin. Oh. And she's, she's out in um, Newport, Shropshire, somewhere that way. Yes, going to view now. Yeah, so all each one of these have got a label on, and you can reference it back to the catalogue. I noticed while I was there, there was little packets, um, and they got them like stapled over the branches. And I did ask one of the the um, staff members there, and he says they'd had problems with red red spider mite. Uh, it, it was like putting these packets over the branches. Is that what they're on there? Uh, I don't know. I don't know my issue whether that's a libel or what. I think there's one up in the top left hand corner, Mick. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, nice gardens. Beautiful. Well laid out, isn't it? Yeah. So it's free to go in. It's a good good half a day out it is. Nice shop and all. And uh, there's a nice restaurant on there. Oh. Uh, and that's his house. Mm -hmm. And that's it, yeah. Just a Here's quick Nigel. Hit. I uh I bought two off him uh, mail order early on in the year and they were magnificent. Was I was it potted or bare rooted, Colin? Potted. I had to. It was. They were expensive, but my word, the quality was superb. Yeah. Uh, I think I paid um, twenty odd quid each. Twenty seven pound each. But yeah. they, were, they were beautiful roses. So if you, if you if you order them now, you can pick bare rooted up around about October, and yeah. they're, they're a lot cheaper. They're cheaper, aren't they? Um, yeah. Less than twenty quid. Yeah. 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 Daughter bought me one, it died. And guaranteed for about five years, Steve. So if you've got a receipt, take it back. You'll get your money back. It were it were mail order and it just developed everything under the sun and the excuses that they come up with were ridiculous. Everything okay. from too much rain, too much this, too much that. Mm -hmm. That's the first that's the first I've heard of that because usually they'll I've seen I've seen people take stuff back, which has obviously been mistreated, and they'll swap them out. No, mm -hmm. it, won't, it won't mistreated. It won't, it only take nasty box, and it started to go yellow, and then it lost all its flowers and all its uh, foliage, and then they said it was too much water, and it was this, that, and all that they gave. How, how long ago was that? Because there's a, a five-year guarantee on them now that you'll get your money back. September last year. 
You'll get him on your back. I did. I did in end, but yeah. they, they wanted to argue about it. Now I was getting to the stage where I ready for just chucking it in bin and leaving it. But it was probably my fault or their fault or it was somebody's fault because it did. Yeah. They even swapped mine back for and and I'm in uh, Austin, Belgium. So yeah. Mm. Don't know why it. Don't know why it did. Didn't even water it. I just opened the box, took it out. Put it on my patio, and I thought, well, that doesn't look, that's not looking. When it came, the flowers were drooping, and uh, they said it must be a one off in end, and they did reap them. Uh. Right, we've got to move on. Nigel, thanks for that, mate. Yeah, mate. Thanks, Nigel. Right, this is an orchid. I nicked off somebody else's uh, Facebook page, which some of them are great, are they? Love it. That's my bonsai chili. Next year, I'm going to cut him off there. He's going to have a thicker stem and, and go out that road. Right, these are, if you're on decent onions, uh, obviously the red ones if you're showing, or eating, don't matter. But if you're showing, it's best to grow from seed. If you have all the, well, you've got more, better, better to pick from. But this is just proving you can get uh, these onion sets were from Wilco early on in the year. But I uh, only need three out just, just for the show. So I'll pick these out. One complete skin. <coughs> there is a bit of discoloration, as you'll see on the on the bottoms, but uh, that, they're all the same. Near enough the same size and shape. I've got middle rings ready to impress, because you see that one is sitting nicely on the, on the, on the base. That one's a bit cockeyed and easily in over a bit. That's why I'm using them down the bottom. Because when you put them under them, you can move the onions about and get them all nice and level. Basically, you want to impress the judge. First impressions count. Right, these have been dried off. I now want to tie them up with raffia. I get the one with the thickest neck, which is in. And I'm going to tie that one up first. So I'll put the, the roughest side to me, and the knot is going to be this side. And when I exhibit him, I'll put the other side in. So the knot is at the back, judge. Just little bits of things, just to impress the, the judge. So there he's gone round twice, and uh, pull it tight and knot him. Now the other two, when I do them, I shall pull them the same amount, so it's the same thickness as that one. Because Nick, yes mate? Yeah, there is, a, there is a knot you can use for the raffia mech that you can, um, it's like a slip knot. So basically, I, I, I'll send you the link. You can, you, can make, you, can, you can make it so the two ends stick inside the raffia so you don't see the knot at all. Mm -hmm. Right, so I've chopped him off there. Then do the next two. Try and get them all the same level, which, which I've got them up there. Because he, if he's a proper judge, or if he's got the time, he will look sideways like that, and he will also look down from the top as well, bird's eye view. So them are all done. So I'll cut them off as level as I can. Impress. Want them later on. Right, my liquid osmuk. I'm now using that for my composty watering, i.e. not just a normal water. So that's what I'm doing there. Right, to top, time to uh, pop this on. Uh, I think it was Christmas time our Ben was here. And he, uh, he had some seed and started putting on. Right. Roots have started going around the bottom of the pot until your knees potting on. What I've done is open those roots up a bit more before I pot him on. I'm just helping him out. I don't want them to be potted on and the roots just carry on going round and round. Using my own uh, compost, still got worms in, I shall leave them in. Make me mound and uh, bung the chap in. Once he's in, give him a good way to it. All done. Right, uh, exhibition shallots, time to tie these up. It's a pain taking job but uh, I've done uh, other things which were more 
Now looking at that one on the left is nice dried off, nice and solid. That one, the skin looks a bit rough or meaning. If you look close at him, all the shoulders are pressing with my thumb because that's exactly what the judge is going to do. And not all going to keep as that one hasn't there. And there's another one I've taken out. He don't look very well. Turn him upside down. He's gone rotten on the base. But there was only two out of all of them that I had to bid. So, obviously, I always do more spares than what I want anyway. But these are near enough the same size, shape, or whatever. I'm just using this um, insecticide container just to hold them upright so it's easier to tie the raffi around. And because it's not a, a large onion, so they're only small shallots, when I get the raffia, I'm just pulling one strip away from that raffia so it's thinner. It's going to look safety if I have a, a thick piece of raffia tied, tied around there. So we tie him up. Exactly the same again. The thickest neck first. Do the lot. Uh, now the bases, I've got to get them off as well. So I'll get me nailing. If you haven't got a nail, you can use a, a small pen knife working from the outside going in. Meaning if you do uh, make a, 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 an odd movement or a, a, you can jolt your nails going in and not on the outside. So it's got less chance of splitting. Nice clean plate. This was done uh, two weeks ago. Meaning that's going to be dried off ready for the show. Right, this photo was uh, found out. This is um, 26 years ago. I don't see the date from there. But this is when we were Crazy Royal British Legion Horticultural Society. That was the name of our garden club when it first started off. But uh, I hadn't seen that photo for Yonks. We had a clear out. I thought I'd show the troops at them. Right, Nigel Coe is our next speaker. You ready, Nigel? Yes, okay, mate. Good man, thank you, sir. All yours. Uh, last last week, as you were probably aware, I was absent uh, from the Zoom meeting because uh, I uh, attended my first show for two years uh, because of the COVID business, of course. And uh, we went up to, or I went up to Hartley Pool to um, the Hartley Pool Borough show. Um, we go up every year when it's on uh, because we have our Northern Area Gladiolus Society show up there. Um, we usually have about, about 200 spikes of gladdies. Uh, but it's uh, this other stuff as well. So I just thought while I was up there, I'd uh, just to take a few photos for you, just show you what uh, what the sort of standard was up there. So uh, Chris, Chris Anthemans, they were very, very short to supply. There was only two vases in there and the large ones and the sprays next door to them. Well, you know, you could have cut them out of anybody's garden, really. But, you know, they made the effort, so fair enough. Um, so these, uh, I'm not sure what variety these were, but obviously a nice sort of uh, intermediate, I think. Amy? Dahlias, they had a pretty good show of dahlias. Um, again, not sure on the varieties, but uh, we just popped through them. There's a, a, a semi-decorative, semi-decorative type of thing. Nice cactus ones there. They were the they were the ponds. Um, there was a better there was a better vase. These ones have to come second, but this was taken on the second day of the show. It's a two day show, Saturday and Sunday. On the first day, um, there was a, another vase of the dark red ones behind that one that uh, they'd blown on the Sunday, and uh, we got petals coming out of them. So, uh, put the tennis one, nice water lily one at the back there as well. Nice white vase there, lovely. Very nice. With interest in the um just on the dailies the they had a, a bit of a mishap we were judging our, our glads and uh, they were going through the dailies there was a championship class for three balls with each balls of a different size and uh the steward had had them down the judge just made his decision the steward was putting them back up and knocked the vases over well not one vase over that took out another vase from the same exhibit the one, the one that actually won first prize 
ended up being on, being on display on the bench with two broken vases of flowers in it. So as you can imagine, there was quite a few sort of why's that one, why's that one sort of thing. Yeah. They'd, they'd been judged before the accident, so you know, it, it won fair and square. Sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, mate. Carnations again, which, I say I've been going up to Hartlepool for about 20 years now and um, they, they used to have the show in the Borough Hall, which was a fantastic old town hall place sort of thing. And uh, they used to have hundreds of carnations in, but again, there was just a vase of three and a vase of one. So it was a bit disappointing really, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth for the organisers, you know, to uh, put the thing on after two years and then um, yeah. the exhibitors don't sort of come along. because. As far as I'm aware, there was nothing else on in the area on that particular day. I mean, this weekend there's three or four shows on because we're moaning they've got too many shows this weekend. But um, you know, the growers are up there. But why they didn't go, I don't know. Mm. Nice three carnations them as well. Yeah, pretty early. Back end of the sweet pea season, of course. Now, but, um, still, still some nice ones about. I thought that was quite a, a nice sort of attractive. Uh, arrangement and uh, again you know some main varieties there nice red one i like that red one it really stands out very good show actually the council do them do them proud i mean even us you know we go as a national bloody oldest society up there and they pay all our prices you get up there the tables are all laid out ready for you you know it's uh yeah excellent um, again, roses, not a, ma not a massive amount of roses, a couple of vases in, I think this was, uh, this was the best of them. Uh, onto the veg. Um, this is a guy called uh, John Ransom, apparently he's quite, quite famous in the tomato world. I don't know himself, not being a veg exhibitor. Uh. Apparently he's the one to beat and uh, you can see why he comes first there, yeah. One of the local blokes up there is a guy called Kevin Trichler. Um, if you ever on just having a bit of a look through Facebook, have a look out for a, a site called um, Mad Keen on Gardening for, for Pleasure and the Show Bench. Because he, he runs that site and he, he grows absolutely pretty much everything. You know, sort of bedding plants, fuchsias, he grows a few croissants and gladdies, every type of veg you can imagine. And uh, I think, um, you know, he, uh, he did pretty well up there. Well, he's got quite a few first. These are his, his um, small beans, his small beans. Good growing, Kevin. Yeah. That was uh, best cauliflower. I think, I think most, most of these ended up on, you know, being taken away for, you know, given away to people at the end of it sort of thing, you know, so. All the losses. So that was the, the best cauliflower in amongst, you know, quite a few. So uh, I think that pretty much of the veg, it was probably the best contested class, I think. Small onions. White, white potatoes, nicely polished up. Old ones. Shallots. Again, Kevin here, first prize again. Two more of the dahlias. I think that was it. Is it Canora Valentine, that red one, that dark red one, I think. It's on the, the, the Giants. That's nice that. pairing. The Alf, Alf Ramsey, I think that one. I remember yeah. that. It's a big one, that is. Yeah. Somebody shows that at our place. Corker, though. Uh, one of my mates who grows glads always also grows dahlias. This is his, uh, his basket display of dahlias. Well, that was quite, you know, sort of uh, bright in your face, like, you know, really sort of mm. eye catching that. That's a good display, that is, because it's hard to get spacing. Yeah. Like between each one, he was doing it there. Mm -hmm. Good spacing all the way around. Again, another decorative uh, daily exhibit. Cabbage, big cab, basically the, the biggest, well, it wasn't the biggest actually, I think it's just basically one cabbage. I think it 
was the biggest of the ones that were there, but uh, I didn't see any scales around kicking around and weighing, so I think that was done on quality rather than uh, in size, but it was the, was the biggest one. That was his big onion that won, uh, nine pound nine ounce. So um, he's, he's got a bigger one, he says, that he's saving for, for the Harrogate show, so uh. that'll come in after that. Then. The, the uh, collection of veg, yeah. That's weak, beautiful, and clean it was as well. Cleaner than mine, hmm. long carrots, obviously, been in a barrel or a pipe or something, or snips. Beet roots. Nice, even free there. Damn nice. So he's cleaned all the small roots out of the bottom. Yeah. Just get your thumbnail and take them off. I was, a bit, yeah, I was a bit surprised with these because I mean, usually, usually sort of when when I've been to shows, they've always put a section out of them, but have a look at them inside. Mm. Team winner. We've stopped it now with our shows. Yeah. Team winner, Nige. Yeah. Team winner, S Chambers. And I were nowhere to be seen. No, you, sneak, you sneaked in with them, buddy, didn't you? I did, mate. They didn't get me prize money, though. Well, they're perhaps going to fade out yet. They'll be doing it after the event. What do you do? Stick them in post? <laughs> uh, Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Go it with Carl. Yeah. Right, so it's like full of takers again. Repeated myself with these, haven't we? We had a bit of trouble sending them through, Mick, didn't we? So we've perhaps, had, we've perhaps got someone more all the months. So. Brill, cheers for that, Nigel. No worries. I thought you'd uh, all appreciate seeing uh, seeing. It was good. Uh, yeah. Are, are up and running again ahead of your own event next week. Did you see Monkey while you were up there, Nige? No, he's, um, they, they, after 20 years, I've stopped jibbing him about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. For those of you that aren't aware, the um, the people of Hartley Tool, years ago, I think in the 1700s, when Britain was at war with France every other week, the, uh, there was a French warship was uh, sunk off the northeast coast, and the only survivor of it was a, was a monkey. And the people of Hartley Tool thought it was a Frenchman, so they strung him up. I did. <laughs> Took him to court, didn't they, Nigel? Yeah. Van yeah. Uh... Nigel, got your hand up, mate. Uh, quickie for Nigel. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of next year growing some um, acid anthras. Yeah. And them clusters gladioli. Well, they're, they're, uh, they're a species one, Nigel. They're uh, gladiolus muriali, they're called. Um, right. Common name is acid anthras. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're a gladioli, they, they sort of flower sort of, I mean, you will see them knocking around now, but they've probably been grown in the greenhouse. If you're growing them outside, you, be, you won't be seeing a flower before sort of September, October time. Do, do you need to lift them over winter or it'll be yeah. all right? Well, down? to tell you the truth, I've never really had much success with them. Um, but I think they're cheap enough for sort of, you know, just buy new ones every year old. I think I'd lift them out and then put some new ones in. Right. Okay. No, you thank pretty, you. Pretty much get them at most garden centres and um, and you know ge general sort of bulb companies. You know, they're supposed to have a bit of a scent, but my sinuses are knackered, so I can't smell it. I used to have my boat up there, Nigel, at yeah. Woodlands. Yeah. The marina. How you been there? The marina in Arkansas. Yeah. yeah. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, the, it's, a, it's a beautiful spot. The travel lodge and the premier inner boat on it. That's right. Uh, and all down one side is uh, a row of international restaurants. So you could you could eat somewhere, the cuisine of a different country every night for about a fortnight if you wanted. That Chinese is good. I've been in there many times. Yeah, yeah, it's a lovely. Well, you know, they say to people, I'm going to Arctical, and they think, right, that's back in the, you know, back and beyond sort of thing, you know, and not uh, not a glamour destination, shall we say, you know, but uh, I, I like it there. I always have a good time. I do. I go. I go up to see my mate. It's it's not a bad place at all, and yet they still knock it to this day. Yeah. 
Lovely. Cheers for that, Nigel. No worries. Good man. Thank you. Right, back on the plot. I need compost and leaf mould uh, taken back up to the back garden. I need to do a bit of topping up. So, first one, I'm getting my compost out. I'll just take the top off and bung the, the bucket in and fill it up with the hand fork. But yeah, as you can see, that, that is a good brew, good growing medium. So that's going to serve me well. Next one, leaf mould. That one is uh, that's about eight months old. And the other one, which is a year old, that's got a very small bit as well. There's my young mate who we saw earlier on. He has now got a, a red breast. Where the last time we saw him, he hadn't. <coughs> Look at that beautiful stuff. You could eat it. And that's the last one, which is the goat muck and the pigeon muck combined. So that's a good brew as well. So these lot I took up to the, all ready to be taken up to the back garden. Uh, probably just over half a bag in each was uh, the weight of it. Blueberries down the plot. Started picking these now, but I'm not picking too many because I want them for the show next week. But uh, some have got a good size on them. I think there's eight blueberries altogether. All in large pots sunk into the soil, meaning they don't dry out so much. And it works. Glad it's still opening. This is the the last bed on the plot. And there's still a few on the other uh, plots that ain't opened up. But the rain this year and the wind has, has marked these and splatted them. Next year on the back garden. We shall uh, be able to look after them a bit better. But this was a nice redden. You see he's got a nice little uh, white throat-ish in the middle. But you can see where the rain marks them. And obviously showing them that I'm going to be down pointed. Right, back of the house. This is where we've come through the porch to the back garden. And this place has never been used for nothing. So I'm going to utilise it. And uh, I'm using every bit of space I can get. Look for these little chaps on the gladys. Obviously that was hiding behind the back. Out of, uh, out of the sunlight. Well, you gotta watch out for the chaps. Go on, sort of. Thank you. Right, this in of Singular Beauty. I bumped them in, in last week in the, in the online show, British Canadian Society. But don't forget now, we're, it's the time of the year where we're, we're up against all the big boys, all the big boys are showing as well. But uh, it's still good to put them in. I was chuffed with him. No daylight in between the in the blooms. But, uh, what I'm going to do with him, we'll see in a minute. And my prims, which I like as well. More people asking for the fish now on the on the worm wheel, so that's doing another dollar supplying out. Because this had dropped a bit in the vase, I'm just tired of cane at the arse end of it. So I've, I've basically I've, I've extended the the length of the plant by putting a cane on him. Now he's standing up better. Cucumbers, still picking them as they are about uh, six, seven inches long. Nice and sweet, sweeter than the big ones. And that gladi, I've took a photo of him for the online show, and then the. Uh, Lynn had this display sent flowers, I thought, well I know where I'm going to put him just to show that off even better, which he did do. Hound up the garden, peruving. Black eyed Susie, them are coming through, and these chaps, I'm dead dead in them. Right. Where's my wheel? First one tonight. Entry twenty five. Mm -hmm. David or Nigel? Oh, Nigel. Way. Hey. 
Well, the Nights one, last one. No system source in there at So. Oh! Oh! Uh, 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 that time, <laughs> I'll have some of that fish meat. Well done. About 30 gallon. You can suck egg. You can have a little in like everybody else. Whatever. Who's that? Right, third speaker tonight is uh, Jeffrey Safford. I haven't seen him for a while. You ready, Jeffrey? I'm ready, Nick. Good man. Hi, guys. Well, I've been away for a while. In the summer, I do our jobs for everybody. Uh, so I haven't been here for a while. The first picture you saw was the success of the year, the sunflowers. They were really tall. Uh, I just bunked them in right. with the seeds I got from somebody. But the difference is the smaller ones have got black seeds and the two tall ones have got white seeds. So if, every, if, if anybody can explain to me what's the differences in black and white seeds, I'd love to know. Right, next pick. This is the only uh, marrow that survived for the big marrows. But today when I went down to the plot, he was eaten from the back from the slugs. So I had to job him in the compost. But that was the only one that survived. The other courgettes and all done very, very well. But this were four plants and only one got uh, one of these marrows on him. <coughs> but it's compost today. The sweet corn is doing good. Uh, I pulled them last week when the tufts were all dark, uh, dark black. And they were more than half filled which so kind of surprised me because the stems are not big. They're not a big fat stem. So I didn't really expect much of them, but the only thing I use them for is to go fishing for carp. So for me, they, they're good enough. Next pick you make. See what I mean? The black sunflowers. These, are, these seeds are black and they're the smaller ones of the lot. And when you take the other picture, you make. Should, I know. Well, you'll see the other one is a tall one, and when you see where the birds peck, the seeds are white. And mm. I didn't know what the difference was there. Is it the tall ones that are white, small ones black, or whatever? This is Swiss chard. It's doing exceedingly well. It's really, really good. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. It gets picked every week. The outer leaves that kind of tumble over, we pick and we use them just to eat. Yeah, make. This is um, like Japanese lanterns. They, we call them fizalis. And when you open them up, it's like a little lantern and inside is an orange ball. Uh, Cape gooseberry, I think they, they uh, called in English. Yeah. But they're, they're lovely. They should be coming into season now. They're a hell of a lot on them, but still all green and still flowers. Normally we get them about end end of September, beginning of October, so I'll be happy in garden when I'm meeting them. Yeah, Mick. See, they're all that size now. They're coming there, but when you pick them when they're brown. Yeah, Mick. These are the leeks that survived. Uh, I don't know if you remember. Uh, I sowed three kinds of leek seeds. All the ones that I sowed were winter leeks. And of the three kinds, this is the only one that survived and is putting on some meat. The others, as soon as I transplanted them, all bolted. They're only the size of a pencil, but they all, all bolted. The ones I gave to friends and everything. And these survived and these are the other ones. And they're doing good. I topped them the, uh, today to get most of the leaves off so I can put back the net for the allium leaf miner uh, fly that's supposed to start in September again. So I covered them today, weeded them, covered them, and cut off the tops. Yeah, mate. 
this is to show what's still going. Uh, these are salsify. Uh, they're lovely vegetable if you like them. I truly do like them, but they're going to be harvested, I think, November time. And they should be about 30 to 40 centimeters, so about a uh, foot, foot and a bit long. And they're really good taste. I don't know if you have them in England. They think they go corsanelia or salsify. Yeah, we. Salsify or never tried them. You tried them, Nodge? Nigel, bungie mic on. <laughs> yeah, there's, I've never eaten them, but there's two girls grow them every year, and I thought they have a massive crop. Yeah, I like them. Yeah. Mm. Scores and nice, is it, or something? Yeah. Yeah. Salsify, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Mick. That's the comfrey. I've got it nine times this year. And I always got them back to the ground, about one inch left on them, and that's it. And they just keep coming, 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 and coming. So I'm okay for comfrey feed next year. Good brew. And that's the same again. Salsa feed. These are my shallots. I've got two buckets full and that bit. But I don't know if you can see they're kind of the different different kind. They're longer. Uh, that his name is. But I don't know if they would be good to put in a show. Because the shallots you use are kind of more bulbous. A bit more rounded. These are more yeah. like eggy shape. I, think I don't know. I think they were referred to as what they call banana shallots. Our version of them, we got like one called Zabrun, which is yeah. a similar. I've got that one as well, but Zabrun is like three or four of those shallots that I've got in one. They're re really much bigger, but these are about mm, two inches tall. Mm. But they're, they're lovely in taste, and we use them all here nearly. Yummy. Yeah, so for the exhibiting, as long as you've got a bit of meat on them like them there. Yeah. And the necks aren't too long, like that one. You, sh you should get away with it, yeah? Mm, okay. Yep. Onions. They're the Bedfordshire Bitf champions. And they really, really, really did well this year. Normally, I have them about the size, let's say, of between a tennis ball and a golf ball. And they, they're good. They keep very very long time but this year normally everybody's told me you give water but not a lot they don't need a lot of water so i said okay so i bung them out but with the rain we've had it's been constant the rain and there was uh one time we had five days of clear sun they said so i said okay these are coming out normally they should be out this week but they've been out a month or so. They're dried off, they're stored now, and they've got a good skin on them, so they'll keep well. But I've never had them that size before. So now I know I need to give them much more water than I normally do. So that's one good thing of this year with low temperatures, constant rain here for five, four or five days at a time, and then torrential downpours Everything's been kind of swamped with water, but now I know onions need a lot of water that I didn't know before. So you learn something from good and bad. Yeah, Mick. This is the only type of cabbage that survived. With, with us, we had slugs, snails, ants, everything you could throw at it. The cauliflowers, no. Nope. The red cabbage split. All the ordinary cabbages, they're just gone. Not caterpillars, but all the slugs. You can see if you go out early in the morning or you go out with a torch and you take a picture of it, it's like one stem full of slugs. It's unbelievable. But the sprouts, they're, they're doing fine. So I'm go hoping to get a crop in December of these. So we'll see. But the other cabbages, no way. 
this is something else that's a success, a success this year. The dahlias, they just keep going and going and going. Uh, them and the pop marigolds, really, really good. Yeah, mate. This as well, that's what something I didn't expect because I've got apple trees that have got apples like this. This is golden delicious, but it's one I bought a few years ago from the Aldi. And I said, nah, I'll bring him in, make him a bit of a, or what you call, uh, I forgot what they call now, but when you feather out the branches left and right, so I let them. Kind of yeah. Yeah, and then full it's of apples. Just yeah, that's it's it. Yeah. yeah, so I did that and all the branches have got apples on them which I didn't expect. And they're all drooping down because of the weight of apples. So mm. that's a three-year-old tree. Marvelous. Good one. Next. This is the first picture of two I have, and that's they, they're my Bramleys. And I love Bramley apples. I can't think you can't beat them for pies or, or just apple sauce. They're magnificent. They're nice and big. A few are turning red now, so I can take them home. Make an apple pie next week. Yeah, mate. And that's him. He is uh, 18. He's 21 year old. And I took him with me from the other garden, from the old garden, and replanted him there two years ago. And I thought, that's not going to survive. Because the roots were oh, no more than a football size. And I said, that's, that's never going to survive. And he's pulled through, but he can't stand up alone yet. That's why that big pole is in, in the middle, keeping him upright. Uh, he's not got, I had to cut through his stabilizing roots to transplant him. So he keeps upright, upright like that, but still giving good crop. Yeah, Mick? Good. This is where the disaster starts. I believe in showing all the good and all the bad in my garden. And now I'm starting the bad bit. My tomatoes were fine. They were, it was a wall of green and tomatoes on them. All you want, all you could eat, no problem. So I've picked of the big tomatoes. I've picked about five, six kilos of them and no problem. And then we had a week of, of rain, but I mean, really downpours. So I said, eh, can't go to the plot. So I'll see in a week. And then I went back and all is black. It's just one wall of black. So I said, okay, well, that's that. So I picked all the green ones and that were still okay. I picked them and I made green tomato uh, chutney from them. So I've got something out of it. Was it, was it blight, Jeffrey? Yeah. Yeah, because I was the last one about, yeah, about, about the last one that got blight. And I've got tomatoes outside. I'll see a picture in a minute. And they've got the resistant variety have got no blight, except two or three leaves outside. And the one next to it was um, a Shirley. And it's just gone. It's unbelievable. And in there, the varieties and everything got it, even the the resistant ones. They're all just black. Okay, mm, was that, are they crimson crush the resistant yeah. one? Yeah. And outside they they're good the crimson crush. Yeah, Mick. So didn't see, you uh, didn't you spray them at all, Jeff? No, before? I never spray my tomatoes. No, no. Um, there's some. I think it's um, is it signum that you can. Spray? Right to prevent. Yeah, but we, um, we've, we've we've got stuff to spray them with. Yeah, I, I never spray my tomato. You don't like to, no. No, because no. I go around the garden and I go pick, 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 and eat. I don't take a lot of tomatoes home. I just eat them whilst I'm walking around there. All right. So I don't like to spray them, and that's what you get when you don't spray them. So I said, oh, oh well, yeah. next year. But you can see there are lots of fruits on there, so. Yeah. Yep, next one, Nick. Look. 
that is the biggest problem. The second biggest problem we've had this year, slugs and snails. And the worst one that we had this year were ants. I've never ever had so much ants in my soil. It's unbelievable. In every bed, every box you lift up, every top pulling you take away, everywhere ants. And one day I had a uh, flying ants, so they all popped out the chrysalis and the tunnel, the top of the tunnel was like under clouds. You know, yeah. when you see kind of sparrows floating together at night, yeah, uh, it was just the same. So I had to close the tunnel, took out an insecticide spray, like for flies, a canister, a gas, and I just emptied the whole thing into the tunnel. And the next day, it was like a black carpet, <laughs> just gone. And these are the slugs that we have hell of a lot of trouble to see. Everywhere you look, every carry you lift up, every, every, everywhere, just slugs. Yeah. Suzanne, got a question? No, oh, it's just, I was just going to say that um, I think there's been a lot of ants this year. Because I've had them all in my compost heap, all over my grass. I've got all these <laughs> hills everywhere, all over, me, all over my lawn. Yeah. So I think there has been a hell of a lot of events this year. Yeah. We've it's had quite a few flying ants. Yeah, it's, it's kind of been, I don't know, it's like seven horsemen of the apocalypse are going to be next. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just a terrible year this year. Yeah, mate. It is crap. There's always something. This is one pumpkin that I have and I've got 32 plants, pumpkin plants, and that's the only pumpkin I've got. And the rest are all plants with flowers, all male, all male flowers. So I've st started jobbing them. The only ones I've left is this one, and then the oh, what's it called? Butternut squash. They're still all on there, and I haven't got one, one butternut on the plant. But I know with butternuts they're later, so I'm going to leave them and see what they do. But I've dropped about 20 of the plants. That I've, they've only got milk flowers. So I think that's the loopy weather again. I hope it's the loopy weather. That they don't get it next year. Yeah. And this is a question. I've got these seed heads. They're from leeks from last year. Uh, organic. But they were the really big, they're not pot leeks, but they look like them. You can buy them on the market here as ordinary leeks, like you buy leeks in England on the market. So, but they're in big bunches and they're one euro for 10 or something. And I said, right, if they can grow them that big, I'm putting them back for seed. So I put them back for seed. This is the result. So I saw them being pollinated. Then I saw the flowers closing again. So I said, okay, I'll put these bags over them. Everything can still get at them. They should have been pollinated. So I'll cover them and see if the seed falls out. They'll fall in these bags. They're tied with zip tie at the bottom and a piece of string. So I'll see what it does. But I don't know if they were pollinated or not. I don't know if anybody can see of those pictures of the other ones, if they're pollinated or if they're just opening. I don't Jeff, know. Jeff, yeah. Um, I, I think some some of the um, growers that grow leeks almost professionally, um, they do they they do what they call shave the head, and they'll shave all those off. Uh, mm -hmm. If somebody can confirm or correct me, but I believe they shave them off. Is no one make and and then the. And then what comes along after that is what they call grass, yeah. and they are very tiny little leeks. Uh, I you... shaved, I shaved three of them, on the end, and the only thing I've got is a shaved head. <laughs> there's, right. no, there's nothing on there. They've been shaved for four weeks now, a month. All right. So I said, I'll see. I shaved two or three of them, and said, I'll see what comes out, but nothing's coming out. Not Maybe yet. I need to walk, wait a bit longer. They can stay there. I don't mind. So I'll see if I can get these for seed. They're just ordinary eating leaves, yeah. but organic. Mm. Yeah. 
It is a bit early, Jeffrey. It yeah. might still come. Oh, it's not your year this year, is it? it is it? No, it's <laughs> you know. That's why I said, look, if if I can go on the on the session and say, oh look, this work, this work, this work, this work, it's all good. But I tried to be honest, and I said, look, if it doesn't work, I'll share it as well. It has been a crap year. Yeah. Yeah. This is an apple tree <coughs> with no apples. And last year I had about <laughs> you go a lot. Sorry, about <laughs> seven kilo of them. And this year there's not one flipping apple on that tree. <laughs> He's having a rest, Jeffrey. Next year <laughs> the clusters. Yeah, I hope so. I'm going to cut them back again to yeah. four or five leaves everything that sprouted so i'll see yeah jerry's mentioned that before yeah it's the seven year um rest every seven years it has a day off that is a quince tree but i need to prune him and i don't know why. how i don't know if it's the same of a pear tree or an apple tree or whatever but i'll see i'll send the pictures to oh, what's it called jerry Edmund? jerry yeah uh, and I'll see what he says, but I don't know how to start with a quince tree. I've just let him grow for two years now, and I said uh, three years now. I said I'll see. Yeah, mate. He's a white tonight, yeah. No, it's no, it's no problem. There's no hurry. Yeah. See, even the carrots. The carrots are going. I've never had carrots not go straight. And now every about. Tenth carry you dig up has gone haywire. They curl around themselves, not around another carrot like I have sometimes. They just go <laughs> unbelievable. And that compost was sift, sand was added. So it's not too high in nutrients, not in anything, just just buggered. <laughs> Decent yeah. seed. Yeah, the the, the these are Amsterdam forcing number mm. two, I think. Yeah. And now I've re sown with the uh, Autumn King. And now yeah. I'm going to put Autumn King and Igloo carrots in buckets to put in the greenhouse over winter. And the, they normally they always work. But Sorry. it's Sorry. me, me and the other growers that grow carrots. We've all got it. If you dig up your carrots, it's like, I don't know. Kind some some kind of orange aliens. Try try sweet candle, Jeffrey, next year. Have you tried ever tried it? Yeah, I've tried it, but I grow them for, like for exhibition thingies. Yeah. But I don't like the taste of them. The the heart in the middle is kind of too woody for me. Oh. I like little young carrots that I can mm. do with peas and everything. So I normally have successional growing. I do it this year as well. And well, just look. <laughs> they're, they're, the size is okay, the length is okay, but they all just go everywhere. Yeah, Mick. See what I mean? <laughs> These are supposed to be the exhibition long carrots. So I pulled them, I pulled one, I said, I'll have a look. I'll pull one or two and see how far they've got, and then the rest I'm going to pretend like. It's for big show and pull a few. So I pulled one. I said, what the, what's this? So I pulled them and said, that can't be right. I said, maybe it's just the odd one. So I pulled another one and another one and another one. I said, oh God. So I pulled them all. They were good and tasty. But <laughs> they weren't for exhibition, but at least I've got carrots from my freezer. And then I said, okay, I'll have a look at the past him. He seems nice and round. And I pulled him, look at him. <laughs> He's like frosted the snowman with a bad haircut. So, <laughs> so I, I said, you. okay, just leave them in. I like them at Christmas time. I'll pull them at Christmas time and eat them like that. So if, if a good one comes out, I'll share it with you. <laughs> yeah, but... What seed do you use on your long carrot, Jeffrey? Uh, the ones I got from you. Oh, mock. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. 
with the, I've, I've never had a problem like this with him. I've mean, had uh, good luck. Jeff, with... Jeff Mick says he has the same problem. <laughs> Uh, I've never had a problem like this with him. I've, I've grown them. If you get about 10 carrots, maybe one will split. And that's it. I've mm -hmm. never had them all split. And I don't understand why the top is good and then it all of a sudden goes. Mm -hmm. So sure. I can't. Has the compost ever dried out, Jeffrey? No. With the rain, we've had no, no chance. Yeah, not with the rain, though. And this was where I was growing the long one, the long carrot and the long uh, parsnip. One of them I put inside the polytunnel in these drain pipes and I said, yeah, that'll be good. And I'll put them with just the same. I had about two inches of nice carrot and then I put them on and boing. And it kind of, it's like, you know, when you pull a spring out of something, it goes boing. <laughs> yeah. it was just the same it's like the legs spread open and poof. <laughs> I said okay give up for this year so I'm going to everything that I grew in special uh, carrot mix I'm going to sieve that put it aside for the winter then sieve it again when I fill up again for next year but no at least I've got carrots to eat now uh, this is the tomato. You see the ones on the right side? They're the Crimson Crush outside. And the one on the other side is Shirley. Mm. So that's completely gone. And the Crimson Crush outside are still giving tomatoes. So I said, okay, I'll leave them. And they're good tasting outside. They're fine. But even inside the Crimson Crush went, ooh, going. Yep. See the difference? You can see the first is thick away is the head of the Shirley. There we go. Another very disappointing thing, the gladioli. Now everybody says it's thrips on there. So I'm cut off all the flower spikes because they kind of you get the flower spike and then the next day the flower spike is brown and you can kind of peel them off and they said okay that's thrips I said okay so i leave them for next year i cut off all the flower spikes so the goodness can go into the corn i said i'll just leave them i'll see you for next year but the only thing that's good about them is at the bottom i planted uh, uh begonias trailing begonias and they seem to be coming out. They took a very, very long time. And now they're starting to come out. So I said, okay. So these are the same cones I sent to you, Mick. I don't know if you had any success with them. But here, they all got flowers. But just, they didn't know. They just went brown and fell off. Yeah. So next year, I'm going to spray for trips. Yeah, Nigel? Um Usually, what happens with when uh, thrips come into your into your glads is um, if you've got like farmland round about and they like had it, it's been harvested, it disturbs them from the fields and they pile into your garden and, and attack the glads. Um, or if you're if you've got surrounding areas that are like if you're on a, an allotment plot and some of the allotments aren't particularly well looked after. Yeah. a lot of weeds and things like that they can sort of hide away in them and then come and attack your glads but just bear in mind if you cut the flowers out the thrips will actually be down or the the eggs the larvae will be down inside the leaves and they will actually migrate down into the corms and they'll overwinter on the corms ah okay so what you need to do is is when the you know when you come to sort of uh, end of the season um get them out of the pots and actually dip the corms in some kind of insecticide solution to kill them off before you put them into store for the winter. Okay, thank you. Right, you just leave them like they are now then, Nigel? Yeah, I mean, they're still growing, yeah. you know, so they're still going to be put in on size down below. Yeah. Uh, and I know Jeff Jeffrey said he didn't, um, he didn't like sort of um, 
spraying them or, or spraying anything. But if I mean, if he's not going to be eating them, it wouldn't do him any harm if he could get some kind of insecticide spray and give them a give them a sort of uh, a going over. And then, uh, as I say, you know, dip the corns in an insecticide solution when you, when you lift them out the ground. Okay, oh. I've, I've got uh, an insecticide that says thrips on it. Yeah. So that should be good. But what do I dip the corns in? Do you have a, do uh, you like the same thing? Make, make up a solution, as it says, you know, like, a, you know, it would probably say on your insecticide, you know, 10 mil in five litres or something like that. Yeah. Just make it up in a bucket and just dip them in that, leave it in it for 10 or 15 minutes and then take them out. Okay. Are you... you and next spring, when you come to replant them, um, you can usually feel if there's any sort of thrips been around on them still, because the corns will be sticky. Ah, okay. I'll have a look for them. Lovely. Thank you for that, Nigel. No worries. And this is, I don't know if you remember, I said I've got a neighbour who has glads. He leaves them in every year. They've been in for five, six years. But... <laughs> I said, I'll get some seeds off of them. So I asked him and he said, yeah, sure. When you see the seeds, just th take some seeds off of them. So I'm going to take some seeds, sow them up and see what comes out of them in a few years. But that's just how he brings them in everywhere. And they seem to grow good. So I'll see. I think they're big bloomed. And that's an ass on a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> that was 10 years ago when it was Prince of Carnival here in, in Nostin. You used to, you have to ride around on that thing for a day and even you, you can even go into the pubs with it. So that's it folks. <laughs> Brilliant. Cheers Jeffrey. Yeah, no problem. Yes. Good man. Yeah, thank you. Next year this year, the year Jeffrey. Well, I'll see. <laughs> if, I've never had a year like this. Not, no. not that bad, so oh, yeah. I hope it's only one. <laughs> Mine's well, been crap. Yes, it's been uh, terrible, especially, I agree with Jeff, all my, all my brassicas have been a wife as except for uh, sprouts, which I've still got. All my cabbages, etc. they just, they just blew. Yeah, see. I don't <laughs> Just, you know, just loads of people lost stuff, got the seeds, please. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Our loopy weather. Right, back in the greenhouse. As you can see, my uh, sweet pepper got loads of fruit on it. And he's doing well. Obviously, hard to see because I'm green. I've still got my little fans on, uh, blowing air movement around them. But they're all, the three of them, a nice dark green with a nice shiny leaf telling me they're decent plants. This one on the right, Jamaican Scotch Bonnet. I just started turning yellow now. There's about, well, there's about five on now. I'm hoping that a few more turn ready for the show next week. And to the side, this is um, Paul Davis. He's a long chili. This is what he got the world record with. Give me some, will he give me a plant? So he's doing well there. And obviously my sweet pepper. That was a small plant I from middle. If you can remember back to uh, probably March, April time. If we go back on that one. Don't forget these two. The chilies are grown in uh, clover compost. And that is using my compost. So I made my own grow bag. So he is on par with them two. Still proving that my compost works. Right, this chap's opened up on, on the right back garden. I can't remember him being that colour last year. I thought he was uh, orange. I know he got the red at the bottom. But he's, he's come out a, a, a beautiful colour. And he's, he's a big flower as well. He's a corker, he is. And that's the one at the top. He's like a pink. One of my prims, I bunged him in uh, last week as well. He did come where, nowhere. I wish I'd have got him for our show next week. Hoping to have some as well. 
and I put a collection of three in as well. We should have got them next week as well, next Saturday. Right outside the patio, uh, we've only ever had two hanging baskets on here. Usually, uh, flowers on them, but that took off. He ate on there. Aaron's gonna have him. He's just hanging on, keep him out of the road. But I'm gonna utilize this space as well. Meaning, I'm gonna put two tubs down there, and that is where I'm gonna grow me blackberries, Miss Spineless. So they go up the wall and across there. These are Leighton's, meaning I want them for our show next year. Taking the hound for a walk, composting next day, so I'll borrow a bit of a comfrey. I'm also going to start taking a, a little bag up and some small scissors, because I want to nick the nettles as well. There's a good dollop of them come out with no seeds on. Right back to me bin. I've been uh, chopping up again, so I've just mixed my brew. That's ready to go in. Nice chopped and mixed. And I'm also adding a bit of, uh, this is that stuff I had from the, underneath the, uh, not the word, uh, spent tops last Saturday, because there's quite a few worms in, so it's my extra dollop I'll put in with them as well. And I mentioned me liquid or smoke, so I'll give them a good soaking. Carpet's back on. Well, I'm, just, uh, I'm moving everything around around here. I have to put the big gate for the hound to keep her out. These little chaps, I noticed these uh, last Monday down the uh, Wilco. I got them out. They're nice and solid and heavy. Frost free, meaning I ain't going to split to nothing. But uh, nine quid. There's two sizes, small and large. But that one, that's where my blueberry is going to go from there into that one and all my fruit trees we've got one there they'll be going into these and they'll be all lined down the side of that wall the raised beds when i get them they'll go down here and there my first three come i was on an iron about the, the those uh, timber tantalized and all this crap and i thought well it's because i use tantalized timber for the raised beds for the disabled on the plot when i've made them and they do last but i've started to go now because that they've been in about 11 or 12 years so they do eventually go so i looked at the plastic and these was recycled plastic meaning they it is nice and solid and these are pretty well, they are bloody easy to put together. That, that's the only sheet you need. And once they are in, they are solid. So I sent for three of them, bunged them down. Look at that, beautiful. A bit wider than the one I had out the skip, meaning I can uh, get three rows in there, stagger. What, what's it. the size of a mech? No, you have asked some of it. Oh, sorry. I Go think on. it's um, three foot six by 14 inch. Can you put a link on? They look interesting. Yeah. Yeah. VidaXL.com. That's the company. Oh, VidaXL. Let's have a look. VidaXL. Go on. But I've, I've been looking for moons now. And then all of a sudden I come across these. Because uh, with most of them, with, with a tantalised timber, they're like the raised beds you put on the ground, like on, on your lawn or spare ground, meaning they've got no bases. But I need something with a base, obviously, because it's going on slabs. There, are, there we are. So it's 100 centimetres by 43 by 35. Oh, right, yeah, one metre, that's all right, that's good. But uh, they are a bit costly, but I mean, once you've got them, you've got them. That yeah. didn't last, out last year. Anybody? So that's where I'm going to go. So I've got to clear all this crap off here from next door. There's still nobody in there. He ain't going to flood the house. There's uh, weeds and shit everywhere. So I've had my uh, clippers. I've cleaned all the crap off. 
I'm now put a bit of netting up there just to keep the hound off this lot here because this this lot is poisonous as well and I'll put me three here. luckily they fit in there perfectly I've sent for another three just waiting for them now so my pots of gladdies they fill them three beds up again and the, the rest spares are down this side so you can see them lot ready for me fruit trees down that side right our next speaker four speeds of night lynn griffith lynn i didn't see you come in i'll be on there lynn are you with us oh. she is but she's muted am i am i uh, can you hear yeah she can hear. yeah got you Right. I'm just going to waffle through the garden. So that's my little plot. Um, I haven't got allotments, so I grow everything in the back garden. And I was given a greenhouse this year, so I was quite excited. Um, and it's just some strawberries and whatever else I've got in there. I just throw everything in together and mix flowers and veg and, and hope for the best. Where you are so that's another view. This is my pumpkin. It, it's not a pumpkin, it's a squash. It's a, the Kiri squash. And I've got about seven squashes on that. Um, not sure quite when I've got to pick them. They're quite orange now. I'm sorry, I presume it's like a, um, a pumpkin. You have to wait till it's hollow. Anyone able to help me there? Um, and it's took over the one fence. And then it's going off and onto the other fence as well. So I've chopped that bit off and I've just kept it in rows on the one fence. That's it. Oh, there's one of them. I've got about seven. Come on, people who grow these. Is that one ready yet or not? Yes, it is. Oh, right. Because, because you can see the stalk, if that turns yellow and then brown, then, yeah. we, then that means it's ripe and ready for picking. If you okay. pick that when the stalk is green, it won't store. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeffrey. There's my courgettes. Uh, all the things that I grew in raised beds seem to have done a lot better than what's in the garden. So I'm going to rethink what I'm doing. But as I say, I like to mix flowers and veg so it looks pretty. Mm. Don't forget we raised beds, one advantage, you got the draining. Yeah. Well, that's another view from the top, looking back towards the house. Next one, please. You've done well there since I have I've come out of the nose round. Thank you. Um, uh, I've worked that one out. I've, in my greenhouse, I've got um, a loofah growing. And I've checked it because I've been on holiday. I checked it when I got back and I've got one at the moment, that's all. But it's, it's a decent size. So maybe I'll get a loofah for Christmas. Um, the rest of the plants, I don't know if they next to it. I've got a uh, Malabar spinach, which is a climbing spinach. It's not a true spinach, but you can eat it as spinach. And then on the other side, I've got climbing tomatoes. So I'm not sure if the next photos show those. I can't remember. Well, that's me, um, Lufa, and the climbing tomatoes at the back. But the, the tomatoes in the greenhouse have not had um, blight, but all the tomatoes in the rest of the garden have had it. I've been pulling them up today. Next one, please. Um, that's in the greenhouse. The, one, the leaves at the back, the big leaves, are the Malabar spinach and then the climbing tomatoes are there at the front. They're very tiny grape-like and they're very, very sweet. Next one, please. As you can see, that's on the left is are the tomatoes and on the right is the, the spinach. And it's pretty much taking over the greenhouse now. Yeah, and just one plant, like mine. Pardon? Just one plant, the spinach. Uh, two plants the spinach and two plants of the tomatoes. 
Uh, it's done really well. Oh, there we are. I've got the seeds from the NEC um, show last year. No, not last year, the year before. This is a good one. But you, I mean, that one plant I'd off you, he, he's, yeah. he's gone bloody loopy. I call it a triffid. Yeah, it might be. Oh, that's just photographs of the, um, the rest of the garden. I've just got shrubs and plants. That's my beans. They took a long time to get fruit on them, but now I've started getting green beans. I like the French thin ones. And that just kept growing and growing and no beans, but it's finally grown. Yeah. And then it grew that much. I put, I've been putting twigs and string everywhere to just keep making them move along a bit more. Next. That's the path that goes up to the veggie part, veggie part of the garden. Next one, Nick. Um, that's like, I've done like MIG down the side was wasted space. So I've put some raised beds and I have to say I've done quite well with them. I've got um, sort of, um, what do you call them? The tomatoes have got blight, but the scallop, I've, I've got a cool shape that's doing okay and the, and the scallop for squash. And I had a lot of male plants, male flowers, but it's just starting to make fruit. And then on the right, that's the sink that I got from the house when I had the house refurbished. And my son-in-law has made me a, a stand to put it on so I can wash all my pots outside. Oh. And my son has actually plumbed it all in for me as well, but I haven't got hot water, only cold. Mm -hmm. And that's got a cucumber somewhere in there. And I think there's... Um, as you can see, the Swiss chard, and it's just taken over with flowers. I've had a lot of cucumbers this year, I've done well. That's me climbing tomato outside. I haven't pulled it up. It's got blight, but the tomatoes seem okay. So I'll pull it up in a few days. The shame. Oh, that was the uh, climbing tomato before it got blight. That's just one plant? That's one plant. Yeah, that's the climbing tomato. Nice. And, it, and it's just full of fruit, full of tomatoes. They look like grapes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it did really well. It's just full of it. So that's, that was quite sad to see that that's gone. And then... There's beans on that side, which I've put string to keep going, and I've got cucumber on either side. Yeah. Cold, got a question, mate. What's it called, the tomato? Um, I'll, have, I'll have to look it up. I can't remember, but it is a climb. It, it, it's a climbing, but I can't remember the variety. I've got okay, those seats from the NEC again. So I'll give okay. them to Nick to give you. Okay, does cheers. That, does, that, does that fence face south, or...? or... Uh, no, the no. south is to the right of it, so it's the fence is coming away from it on the right, and on the left is north. So it's, yeah, it's, but it does get a lot of sun in the morning, a lot of sun, and then it gets a little bit in the afternoon. Looking good. It's looking good, yes. Good. Uh, and that's just a view of all the flowers, and I think there's a courgette there as well. That courgette's done well. It's a round courgette, and I've had quite a lot of them after that. The tomatoes before they went, and the yellow courgette at the front on the bottom. But I haven't had a lot of them this year. I've had a lot of the green ones, but not the yellow. Because I like the yellow for making cakes with lemon and poppy seed. Courgette cake is rather nice. Mm -hmm. Oh. I can see a recipe coming on. You can have it if you want. It's really nice. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. I think it's just a view of the path going up to the top. At the top, of, I don't like mowing lawns, so I've, I'm trying to get um, a time lawn, and I'm nearly there. So it's just time. And 
there again. I thought my, um, I think it's the rhubarb on the right and courgettes, and they've also got um, kale and flowers in, amongst it all. Yeah. The beans, and again, it's just showing you how I've mixed everything together. Real. Thank you. Lovely, Lynn. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Very good. Very nice. Thank you. Excellent. Right then, my first raised beds out of the skip. Got me glandies up. These are now being tied up. To me canes on the back. Keeping them nice and straight, hopefully. He's just starting to open up now. Probably be too far over for our show, but uh, we'll see how, we'll see how he goes. Right, <coughs> of singular beauty, OSB. These are my little corms, my babies I took last year. I think I've got uh, three pots of them. And there's also three pots of Shalimar, which are at the back of the prim. And there's Lady Helen. These were the yellow prim, the corn that's off that. I like them as well. Lady Ellen and uh, Shalimar. Two of my favourite prims. And there's a the Shalimar, a bit blurred, but it's just, just starting to open up. Blurred cork it is. And the fruit trees I'm waiting for, extras. Uh, they're coming early September. Strawberries, I'm getting uh, 12 of them. We're going in our baskets. I'll put them on. I can't remember. We'll see that later on. Uh, five raspberries canes. They were coming early November. These are the late raspberries. So they'll be for our show, hopefully, early September. And those will be grown in the, the raised bed I'd had to skip, which got me glad he's in now. He's coming the other side. And the raspberries are going there, up against the wall. And I've got a grape from uh, coming, which is going outside the top tunnel of the garden, going inside, obviously. There we are. Nigel, good man. Getting in the contact for me. When I Google this, probably uh, three, it might have been a month ago, half baskets, because Wilco had gotten on. And I Googled it, and the bloody cost of them. If you remember them two little baskets, what was on here? Earlier on, and I said Aaron's gonna have it. I think that was um, somewhere like 34 bloody quid off uh, eBay or Amazon, whatever. And nobody got any. And then I just said, um, just there. Uh, what did you mention, Nigel? Who, who got them? There's a few of them, but I think Wilkes was the cheapest. I sent you about four links, they I? Yeah, but Wilco had got none at all. Oh, was, was it um, um, the DIY place? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of the name on it. B and Q. No, no. Up, up, Chloe, up, on the on the left. Oh, uh, Wixis. 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 Yeah, Wixis. I went in there and got, got off there. Got loads on. So these are where my strawberries are going to go for next year. And these are a late strawberry, meaning hopefully with with the liners. I think that was eight quid each, which is bloody cheap. I was expecting to be twice as dear. So uh, <coughs> that's where my strawberries are going next year. And because the hound, when it comes out of the back door, it jumps over this bit here, that's too high for at the moment. So them three pots are going in front of that one. So I'll get three fruit trees in there as well. These are the standard that just grow supposedly straight up. So it'll be extra bit of colour, blossom and all this rubbish. Because there's only me and pet now. So we'll be sat this side normally in the sun. So another three fruit trees going there as well. And if you remember me grape in the tunnel, there's still a bit of black in there. I had loads of this on the bottom of most of the, the grapes bunches of grapes and a bit in the middle there's a bit on the top there right, I'll just cut that off but these are now starting to fill out 
and uh, it didn't affect him, whatever that was, whatever caused it. I can still get away with now with uh, showing a plate of these in the fruit collection for our show next week. So I've got away with the grapes. Tom's in the greenhouse, they was late going in, meaning them late ripening, but uh, they're just starting now the cherries and the normal Tom's. I had them off port earlier on. And there's me banana skin helping them out. Then the last gladi I picked on on his tod and him he's a nice one and all. I've marked this down, I want the babies out of him end of the year, the corners. Anything that's got a like he's got a like a peach outside, then he goes yellow, and he's got the red throat as well. Anything like this, I like them. Whatever his name is, but as you know, I'm crap on names. I think it might be Cream Perfection, but yes, that rings a bell. Thank you, Nigel. Good man. Right, if you remember. Uh, Elan's give us a, a talk about his giant red cabbage earlier on and he said if anybody wants any seed he is I've now asked him uh, roughly giant red cabbage will we be ready just to get to let people know Tony you're ready in about four weeks so that was a, a week or so ago so very soon if it, the, the seed will be ready so if anybody is interested in the giant red cabbage seed just message me and uh I'll, I'll get Neil to send it to me, then I'll post them out to you. And our fifth speaker, Rowley, are you ready, sir? I'm now that moving myself, yeah. Good man. Thank you, sir. Oh, we're starting up. You ain't starting at the beginning. Ah. You should have a picture of a little boy to start with. Oh, he's on the arse end. Oh, well, you, you obviously, you know, I'll do it off a couple of, of my head then. Because I'll, put, I'll actually put them in order. Not to worry. <clears throat> I'll put them in order. Basically, um, I belong to the Flinic Gardens Association and their show uh, was the other Saturday. So um, we was notified a bit late, really, because they didn't know whether the local uh, village hall would allow us to have the show or not. So we was only given a few weeks notice. So it was a matter of um, grabbing into what you can to put into the show. So as I've got the, uh, the little grandson living with us, uh, I put him in an entry as well. Um, but he had to go in the novices. <laughs> That's not bad for two and a half year old to go in the novices. So we sorted some stuff out between us. Um, and basically this is obviously pulling the sweet candle stumps or some of the sweet candle stumps for the show. Um, as you know, I've been playing about with um, the biochar. So the, the bed that they're sitting bit in front of had 50 carrots in there, two different compost mixes, all with my biochar in. So um, obviously that's one pull in. You carry on now then, Mick. There should be another lot next to it. Yeah, and that's the um, same lot. I think the two on the left, the two bunches of three on the left, is where I was narrowing it down um, to the two entries. So, um, you know, I was quite pleased with it in a roundabout way. There was a little bit bent, and there was, a, like you say, a few multi-legged ones where the compost was a bit strong. But I knew I had done a strong compost mix purely to see what would happen with the uh, biochar in it. So, you know, I'm pleased, but I shall weaken the mixture down next time, you know. Uh, next one then, mate. Yeah, right. Uh, that one is three that went in for the little fellow in the uh, in his class, which obviously he's took first prize with. So he's walking about waving a cup above his head now, saying he's the champion. Mm -hmm. So uh, that all's worthwhile there. Uh, and that's the one that I won with three. Uh, so I got first prize with my three as well as. So that's that. Next one. Uh, that's his two cucumbers. Th this year, we, though I always grow or keep one greenhouse purely for cucumbers. I'll play about with the different small lunchbox ones to see what ones I get on with the best of. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, this year, the Nimrod and the Passandra have 
outgrown any that I've grown in the past, if you like. And I, I well, I have had the, the first prize the other year with um, for Sandra uh, this year. Um, that's two for the little fella that he can pick and sort himself. Uh, that he's got a first prize again with his Nimrod. So um, he's well pleased, like, you know. Raul, yes. have you tried Philly Munch? Yeah, I've, I've tried that. My brother used to grow them. Um, but we, we've been through, we don't really find in fault with a lot of them. We've just more or less tried over a period of time, probably half a dozen or more different ones to see what ones we get on with, you know. And uh, to be honest, these ones are generally, the, these Nimrod, I generally give up as, um, well, I've got about four plants with them. And the missus has got one in her green now, so there's five plants. And I would say we're getting about 20 cucumbers a week from them ones. Uh, and the name, the neighbours are nearly as fed up with cucumbers as we are. <laughs> you know, but where we are, we, we're, where we live, we've got two or three pensioners and all that. So uh, they're sort of grateful for anything. But, uh, you know, I could try many months another year, but I'm well pleased with the Nimrod. It's a real... Um, pro, well, not only prolific, it, it, it really grows marvellous. It, it, it's like a bloody triffid the way it grows. You know, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Um, and once you've, it, it, it's funny really because it seems to do its main stem and then it's thrown some side shoots out that are just as prolific as the main stem. Are they all, fe all female, are they? Yes, that's an all-female one, yes. I only grow all-female cucumbers. I only grow cucumbers in the greenhouse. In, well, two greenhouses, one at home, and the main one uh, down on my holding. Um, that's all done... I'll, I'll call it semi-hydroponic, is what I'll call it, because they're one side of the greenhouse is uh, on auto pots, and the other side... It's on a wicking system that I've made myself, but it's like um, uh, a root pruning wicking system. Uh, in actual fact, I outgrow the auto pots with my system, so I'm well pleased with that. Do, do you use net baskets? Yeah, um, yes. The, the, the basket's in the bottom of the... Um, well, they're called root, uh, root pruning pots, is what I've got. If you, if you look them up on an hydroponic shop, it, they're probably a forerunner of an air pot. Um, and yes, I have cut a hole in the bottom of them, put a three inch um, pot in it. And then what I put in there to, to um, draw the stuff up is, you know, the um, wicking matting stuff, you know, just normally lay on your green else. Capillary matting, yeah. Capillary matting, that's it. I actually make a roll of it, and stick it in the um, pot, and it comes up halfway up inside the tub. Yeah. Um, and it, it works for me. I ain't saying it's the right way or the wrong way or whatever. It works for me. You know? Um, so that's... that. One. What, what I will do one of these days, because I really do play with automatic watering all the way around on everything that I can, I'll probably... I'll try and put something together that shows all the different variations of automatic watering that I'm doing. And they're all DIY ones that I've sort of looked and copied and thought up myself and, you know, had a go with, like, you know. Well, all right, all right ne next one then, Mish, if you like, yeah. And this one, obviously, is a pair of Carmen's that I took first prize with. Now, just the, uh, they're obviously Carmen's a female one. Within the greenhouse, I had, or I still got, two Fem Spot, which I've never tried before. And I will never ever use them again. They're absolutely covered in powdery mildew. Right, no other cucumber that I've ever grown has had it. Right, except these fem spot. So um, as far as it goes, I should never ever grow another fem spot. I don't know whether everybody else gets done with them. Whether it's something I might have done or might not have done. Um, but it's the end of the road for fem spot for me. Ne next year, I'm gonna. Grow the Carmen in there for the big ones, but there's oh, whatever's the name of the other one? Med, uh, it's got another one that he grow. If you look on a Medwin site, he's got his Carmen and, a, and another one 
that he grows a Cooper or Cooper mm. starts with a K, doesn't it? Cowper or something. I should try growing them as well. Uh, have you had a go at the Telegraph? Will the Telegraph improve? No, no, not, not inside. I, I'll, I'll start with Carmen. To, to be honest, a lot of the show growing um, veg that I grow really uh, comes from Marcus Powell, where yeah. he's the one that got me into it and then told me where I'm going wrong and told me how to do this and how to do that and how to do the other. So uh, I've stuck with the type of um, plants originally that he grew with. You know, but the, this cucumber glass here, it's about the third time, if not fourth time, that I've won that cup. Um, three times with a Carmen and once with a Passandras. So it's a sort of a, they ought to give me it soon, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, this is a cracker coming up now. This is just ordinary stem of beans. Again, Marcus gave me the uh, seeds uh, from these, and I think they could originally come from Sherry Plum anyway. Um, but they're just ordinary stenners. When I was looking through to try and make the numbers up for the show because of the late thing, I spotted that they only wanted six for the junior class or, or the novice, which the little fellow was in. So I'd got plenty of them. So I sorted through, uh, put them in for him, and he picked up another first prize there. So I think we had five firsts and one second, and then one that will come up in a minute that I'll show you where I went wrong. Obviously, I never got nothing for it at all. All right, Mick, please. Yeah. Now, these ones, it, I cop this up totally. Where, where I um, pulled them straight and wrapped them up uh, in wet tissue or damp tissue and then cling filmed them and put them in the fridge, if you look at the bottom, I never got the tails in covered up. And of course, they got burnt in the fridge. So I still put them in for the hell of it because there weren't much there, you know, it, like whatever his name said earlier, you've got to show the bad stuff as well as the good stuff, you know. And um, obviously, you're not going to give anybody anything with <laughs> nine tails all gone on them, are you? But it's a learning job anyway, isn't it? So, um, you know, some you win, some you lose. Okay, mate. And what, what, what I will say about the Stenners this year, going backwards, is the wind seems to have aged them very bad. I've only, I, I've only set two dozen plants right and th these stenners that the, the two pictures of them are i had to sort through and actually get the smaller ones that look nice and fresh that anything sort of 14 15 16 17 inch ones they're as old as buggery and the only thing i can think of is the wind has really hammered them uh, and, and it's like aged them I've never, I've never, I grow stenner every year. I've, I've never ever had them age like they have, but and I've never grown them in this bit where it caught the wind like it did this year. Mm. Looks like whether it is the wind. Looking at them <laughs> compared to the ones on the left, yeah, nice and long. What what length do you reckon they are about? About thirteen and a half, I think. Okay, Steve, you're well, under my. Yeah, just looking at that exhibit, the beans and the card at the bottom, it says exhibited by. Is that there for when judges come past? No, no, you, the card's turned over. Oh, now, okay. On the card, the other side, it just says class number nine. Uh, it gives you no name. That's, that's, it, just turn the cards that. over and write that you won first, second and third and sort of things like that on. And what they do is they ask you the name, your entries. Well, I don't think a lot of people know what they're entering. So mm -hmm. I put, if you looked at all my entries, they've all in the same writing got the name of it on, but I don't put them down until after judging. Otherwise you can see it's the same person putting the stuff in. The same okay. as that they're not on backboards because if I was the only one that put them all in on black backboards, the judge knows they're all the same enter, uh, person entering, don't they? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't do anything like that which would lead it on, you know. Uh, to, to be honest, it, it's not that big a show. Although it's a decent-sized show, and, and it was poorer this year, obviously, because of the COVID. 
but I think it's unfair. You know, a lot of people are just putting stuff in straight off of their allotments. Well, I like to think mine and somebody else that's got me on here in a minute, Darren, we, we tend to have a little bit better stuff than what they do. And I oh, think okay. it's unfair that the, the judge can identify you because they've had the same judge, some Welsh judge, for two or three times and I've had a chat with him afterwards and he's seen my stuff. So now I won't put a backing on it purely so that it, it, it seems unfair. If I thought there was people with the allotments that weren't putting entries in because the same people are winning it year on year, I'd, I'd stop entering for a couple of years to give them a chance. I don't want to deter somebody by putting better kit in there all the while. You know, I don't I wonder, know. I wonder, how, I wonder how many people put stuff in straight up at market. Well, maybe they do. Maybe they do. This, <laughs> this, this, this is um, Bush Baby um, Maras and in the main picture, to, to the right, they're the Bro uh, Blight and Bell. They've been poor this year, but this year, as you can see, they're growing up stakes. And the, there's only two lots of arrows, one Blight and Bell and one Bush Baby. But then to the left of that, I've got um, two yellow courgettes and two green courgettes. And I'm trying in this year for first, growing them up stakes just for the hell of it to see what happens. Yeah, you know that's all I've done. Just spend as much time buggering about and making stuff as I do growing stuff. Really, we but, we, had a, we had a fishing show and uh, a fishing uh, match, European fishing match, and there was two thousand entered, and the guy that won the two the ten thousand pound won it with a twenty two pound cod, yeah. and it had cloudy eyes which is a sign that it's been dead for a couple yeah. of things yeah. and everybody knows it was brother that brought it on a you know from a market mm. and they just yeah. it up and go and put it into tide but it's open for everything isn't it like I said well you, you know it, it, it's down to your own conscience isn't it like I say I enter um, not I like to think fairly I might have better growing conditions than some of them have got. But I, I would hate to think that people wouldn't show because I win every year, if you know what I mean. I'll, I'll, I'll have a couple of years out to, to make it fair. Uh, and But in saying that, um, because I'm, I'm sort of co-opted onto the committee of the, of the Gardeners Association, so I serve in the shop forum, uh, whenever my rotor comes up, umping bags of compost in at people's cars and things like that, I do plant away, and, and I, I, um, I've, I got the other year a load of pumpkin uh, seed from the top growers, which we shared out to them. I've had um, oh, sunflowers of big heads and tall ones um, that I've given out, I've grown tomato plants and give them to the children uh, so that they can have a go in the shows. We give every year um, onion sets to the children so they can take part in the shows. Uh, we also um, give potatoes out to various schools within our area. Um, and then this year they gave them out to the uh, Boy Scouts and what have you. So of course that means you've got to go up there <laughs> And weigh them all out so they know what they've done in their competition. So we, we, we try to sort of go with everybody, if you know what I mean, and uh, help everybody we can, you know. But uh, no worries. Anyway, can you? Another one. Look on your screen, you mentioned the people going out, buying veg yeah. and showing it. You, you yeah. can't do it because if you've got a decent schedule made up, most things are said you're going to have three in stalks like carrots and parsnips and stuff like oh, that. Right, so, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, they're, they're, they're two of the marrows. One, one of them, in actual fact, I scratched underneath it. So um, I'm a bit surprised because I have won that class before, but you can see um, Collins won them on the right-hand side with his pair. He's gone for smaller. Mine are within the size in the in the rule book like you know because uh, they use uh, because 
is affiliated to the MBS, so we use their standards for showing. Um, but you can't win every class, so that's the second. Like I say, we had five first, one second, and obviously me beans with the black tips on. <laughs> You're not getting nothing, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so you know, like I say, I've won that class before, so I'm not unduly bothered. Like I say, it's good to see somebody else. They've come off of an ordinary allotment, and would you believe that the chap that won them on the right hand side, Colin, somebody pinched all his onions off of it, off of his um, allotment site. Uh, about two days before the show. Uh, mm. So, like I say, there's always somebody about to yeah. do something against you, isn't there? Yeah. Any, uh, another one, Mick, please? Yeah, just on that one there, don't forget, if, you're, uh, if I'm judging, don't forget, I mentioned cost before, C-U-S-S. Condition is the first thing I'm looking for. Yeah. The next one is uniformity, which he's yes. got there more so than you. Yeah, one one is, one is well, I, I took the, the right hand one of them pair. I took off earlier when it met the size again. That was about thirteen and a half inches, um, and, and what is it, one hundred and forty centimeters or something, isn't it? But it's about fourteen inches anyway. I think is what the book says. And of course, the other one's a little bit different color to start with, off the same bloody plant. Would you believe? Yeah, but you know, so I've, I've got no argument with the judge. He, he, he was. Right there, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And th this, what, what I've done here, these are the yellow solio um, courgettes. If you can see, there's a circular pipe in there, right, which is the um, soaker hose. And in the back of the hose pipe, all of those that are grown up stakes, I've got a hose pipe runs down there, which I've teed off and put a circular made up a circular teed it all in a soak hose so that's how they all get watered like i said i'd be interested to show some of my watering systems and that just runs to a barrel that's fed with spring water so i when i'm down there everything is spring water is that gravity fed round or yeah, it's gravity the... fed i've yeah. got uh, it's a blue 45 gallon barrel that that comes off of uh, which is fed by an ibc the reason I put a blue barrel in front of or after the IBC or in between the IBC and the plants is so that if I want to add any feed, I've got somewhere to put the feed. So, um, what, believe it or not, all the um, maras and uh, courgettes and cucumbers, they've all been fed uh, with BioBiz fish, fish mix and BioBiz Grow, which is liquid. The, the same like you know so obviously the, the fish is high nitrogen and the um, bio grow is high potash so I just mix it up pour it in the blue barrel um, and when it's you know best part of done um, I'll make another mix up pour in there so, so uh, does the IBC top the blue barrel automatically or do you have yes yeah every everything's automatic the, the the spring water runs down what 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 I've Got, it's got a spring, got, got a hole in that's about eight or nine acres, right? And at the top of it, there's um, a spring up there, and it just used to drain down the ditch. So I went up there with a the JCB, dug a hole out, stuck a tank in it, and stuck a blue pipe in the tank, run it down the ditch, <laughs> right? So it pours out, pours out of the pipe, and there's one, two, one, two, three, four, five. There's five I IBCs scattered around, right, that run off into um, smaller barrels that then run into what they're going to feed. So, like I say, you can put your liquid feed in or whatever feed you want to put in, unless, of course, you want to pour it direct out of the watering can. Mm. You know, so it's all automatic. Yeah? How do you control the flow, then? How do I? Control the flow, right, stop and start it. It, it works permanently. It, run, it runs down the all the all the IBCs got ball valves in them, just the same as your ball valve in your toilet, right? Oh, yeah. So it runs down there. Obviously, the lower ones fill up first, and as they all shut up, the ball valves all come up. But the ones further up the field then get filled up. You know, it's it's, it's worked. And at one time, um, 
down there. I had about 50 bloody sheep and that there's enough water there for all the sheep as well. So he's going to put this all together. On yeah, a I'll, I'll put on. something together about and show you. They, they, these are not mine, these, these potatoes, but I was quite struck. With them. Uh, they got the first prize for the coloured tomato. Uh, tomato. They, they got the, pr the first prize for the coloured one and they were Maxine. I took the photograph more to remind me of what name they were, so I'll try some of them next year. Good spuds, Maxine. I used to show them. Yeah, but they look they look nice, Tommy. And they caught my eye amongst the coloured ones, and they got yeah. the first prize as well. You know, so whatever her name is, Lindsay Barker, she must have proved the first prize for them. Steve, you got right. your hand up. Some permanent watering caused roots to rot. No, they're they're on wicking systems. If, if permanent water caused roots to rot, all your hydroponic stuff wouldn't grow, would it? It just okay, takes away once with a wig. Yeah, chemicals that, don't you, Roland? I, I, I don't use, well, so I do use chemicals because there's the chemicals in this bio biz, and I also use Chempax stuff as well. So yeah. that's not like blue crystal stuff. That's got to be chemical anyway, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, the compost is all composted or smoke, cow muck, um, grass all mixed up, food waste goes in there as well. So our own compost, when in the buckets that's what i say i consider myself to be semi hydroponic because i'm not using coir and growing them in chemicals or, or whatever in coir i have proper compost if you like that i plant into it's just that it has water or or if i decide i want to boost the water and put something in i do but like i said i'll put something together to show you the tricks that i get up to anyway okay. Oh, cheers, Roland. These, Thanks, Roland. These white ones in the middle, obviously Winston, and that's a uh, Darren uh, Pritchard. He just well, he had, did up until this year, um, where he sort of got two other things in mind. Um, does a lot of showing, uh, and normally, well, he, he generally beats me to be honest. Um, but normally, between the two of us, we we clear up quite a lot of the prizes at the show. But Darren's put some, uh, like I say, Winston in there, and he's won his cup for the Winston. Uh, and then he's, I've got more stuff of his in here as well. The next one. Yeah, that's his collection. He, he does grow nice onions, and I couldn't grow an onion to save my life. The only onions I've ever grown that have been any sense, uh, like Gerald says, is um, Bedfordshire champion. And living in Bedfordshire, and you know, I can remember dad used to grow Bedfordshire champions donkeys years ago. So I might have another go at them this year. But uh, that's Darren's collection. Like you say, he, he puts nice in. I mean, that left handed carrot there, that's a lovely carrot, isn't it? I mean, I wish I could get all mine looking yeah. like that one. You know, I mean, most of them are like the right hand one, aren't they? But that left hand one, it is, you know, it looks nice in the picture. And when you pick it up and handle it, yes, it's a nice carrot as well as. But they're, like they're, one like that as well. they're not stenner beans. They did, did say what they were, but they're not stenners. Um, bench master, I think, something like that. You know, but and that's just a, a picture across. You can see the flower people in the background and the veg that's in there. You know, like I say, for, for a small show straight after COVID with only about a month, five weeks notice, it, it was pretty much all right. Yeah. No, I don't know what else. Oh, what's the little fella? The last one, then. Yeah, there he is. He's washing his carrots, and of course, it's great fun to turn the hose by for granddad, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it has to be done. So uh, I think that's about the last. No, well, that's it. That's that's the bed that um, I obviously grew this weekend. That's um, two foot six deep, and I call the call the um, stations out twenty inches. And they're seven inches apart. Yeah. Brilliant. I don't know where the old picture. I know where he's cut the old picture from. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cheers, Rolling. No problem. Thanks a lot. Good Thank man. You. Right, our show. We've been after a marquee for Youngs. I suppose we come from Denmark. I had some trouble with them emailing all this crap, and uh, they wouldn't answer the emails. Because uh, obviously we need the marquee for our show. 
and it was only up until last Friday. They were, they were still getting problem, and it's basically since we've come out of the EC, nothing is being shipped over. But because they took the money out of the account, that tells me, well, they said it's uh, on its way. When they took the money, I thought, well, it must be because they took the money out. Anyway, basically, up till last Friday, I says, all I need is, is this going to be with us before two days before our show? Otherwise, I'm going to go elsewhere because I could have gone elsewhere, which I did end up. And I, I still had no reply for them, so do all. So basically, peed them off. And I went to UK tents and uh, 12 by 6 metre. They'd got one left. Uh, well, they got two left, but one was a, a, a better model, basically, 1400 quid. And uh, it was either have that one or no show. Well, we can't get to tell everybody that there's been no show. It'd be bloody, I'd get bloody hung. Anyway, we bought that one. I tried to buy it. I had got enough acres in, so I had, to, I had to go down the road and get him made to buy it on my behalf. So the show is on. We're supposed to be getting that in a couple of days' time. So the show is still on, and there's a hound helping me out putting this lot together. That was earlier on during the week. So this Saturday is our show. Uh, Friday, we're uh, putting the marquee up and uh, Cables tears, or I think that if they all turn up, I hope they do. Ten o'clock Friday morning is about ten hours. Should take us two, two, um, two hours tops if everybody works the socks off. So hopefully that's going in, and hopefully it stays bloody dry as well. Some of the stuff I finished tying off uh, last night. Shallots and onions, these are drying off nice now, nice dark skin, what the judge likes to see. Right, that's for Saturday. Sunday, we've taken the stuff down and whatever, so th there's no Zoom. The weekend after, I've got a reunion, and this was this lot. There's me. This is when I joined HMS Ganges, 15. And that was 55 years ago. He got in touch with us uh, a while back. We got a reunion the Sunday, which is the September the 13th. So it is exactly 55 years to the day where we joined up. And he's turning up. Uh, there's about five of us on here. And there's Where's another you? photo as well. There's about Where's four. You, Mike? Sorry? Where are you? There. Like a bloody girl, are you sure? <laughs> you know how to make friends, do you? <laughs> Bay back for last week. So I'm looking forward to that. So that'll be a, a good sesh. I think we've got to go down Reading. Meet up down there. So that's why we're nobody here for the next two weeks. But we will be for the week after. Uh, Colin, you were here last week. I've got a talk in Inns Gardening Club, which is only about 11 minutes away from you. Colin, have you ever uh, run off? Are you still here? I'm here. Good man. Inns Gardening Club. Where? Inns. Oh, right. That's just up the road, yeah. I'm talking there soon. Um, where at? At the club? Yeah. I'll let you know in your way before. Okay, yeah. So, other talks I got, Wednesday 4th of Sept, 8th of Sept, 15th of Sept, 16th of Sept. Yeah. Sutton Coalfield, there's a two in Osborne Street. These two are about eight miles from each other. Weird, that is. And there's one in Newark, Nottingham. But if anybody's about on them dates, you can get in all of them. That's a quid entry, three quid, three quid, and three quid. But uh, if you need any more info, just give us a, a, a message. I'll see you at Bill Salt, Mick. Oh, well. Is that close to you? Yeah, about uh, oh, 10 miles. And that's it, people. All right.
Hope you've enjoyed tonight. I'd yeah. like to thank all my speakers. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, I thought you'd finish for a year. Finish for what? What? For a year. No, two weeks. Have you not been paying attention? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> hey? The microphone was broke for a bit, were it, Steve? Yeah, yeah, it were, Nigel. You're right. You're right. Never work with kids and animals. You don't need a microphone. Which one is How that? Kid or an uh, animal? <laughs> I were I were gonna be a compost king, but they found out I go mum and dad. <laughs> I no, compost yeah. you oh, shit. No, more like the, me, Bolt, eh? More like the compost queen. <laughs> oh should have you fat there. Eh? Oh, <laughs> anyway, troops, I'm going. Oh. I've been called. I'll send you some Thank more. You. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can Good everybody be can everybody pay the subs? See you all. Bye. Bye. Yeah.